Yo, guys, what's going on? I want to talk to you today about this. This is the transistor tester or the component tester that I use throughout my live streams and throughout my videos. And uh, if you've asked me any questions about amplifier repair, what equipment to get, I probably would have recommended you get one of these. Now, this is a relatively cheap um, component tester. It's the MK328. TR LCR ESR tester. Now, this is made by EZM Electronics Studio. Okay, um, now the history of this device, uh, I think there was a, a few um, smart asses that came up with this this uh, kind of circuit design, this, um, this you know, the circuit um, and the firmware for this. Um, and I think it got. I think there's an official one of these that's really expensive and it got copied by China as everything does and um, they started banging these out. I think this is probably, I don't think this is one of the original ones, I think this is one of the Chinese copy ones, but there are a bunch of these floating around that all look exactly the same. Um, however, there are copies of copies of copies and there are various different models with different firmware versions floating around. Now, if you want to get one of these, which I highly recommend you do, and there are some issues with this, which I'm going to talk to you about today. I want to talk to you about some of the things you need to look out for on this and what readings to take with a pinch of salt and some things to bear in mind when you're reading components with this. Um, but the one that you want to look out for is the one that has the latest firmware that is the most legitimate Kind of version for this cheap version is the one and it has to say EZM Electronic Studio. I bought some replacement ones because uh, this one actually died on me um, originally. I bought some replacement ones here from Amazon. Um, exactly the same. Look, it looks exactly the same, but it doesn't have this EZM Electronic Studio logo on it. And as a result, this version of Transistor Tester has a really stripped down version of the firmware on it. It doesn't give you RDS readings, it doesn't look anywhere near as nice on the screen, um, it misses out lots of information, and it doesn't seem as accurate between readings either. So if you're going to get one of these, make sure that it's very difficult to tell, I guess, when you're buying it, but try and get one that has the EZM Electronic Studio logo on the bottom and you'll get a legitimate one that has the right firmware. Now if you're wondering what the correct firmware should look like, if we just take a, a transistor here and whack it in, one of the most things you're going to be commonly reading is MOSFETs, because you want to know is the MOSFET alive, what are the specifications for matching up in parallel banks and stuff like that. So the one which has the, the current latest firmware on it will look like this when you read a MOSFET. So you should have the nice picture diagram up in the top left hand corner um, showing you gate drain and source with the pinout you should then have what type of component it is the VT CG and then when you first test it it will tell you a RDS reading which we'll get onto later um, and then when you press the test button once more it gives you the uh, diode reading between drain and source and that's how it should read MOSFET if it reads it any other way um, with any other kind of uh, missing information or the diagram is different then you probably got a, a, a copy copy fake one like a really shitty one so try and get the one with EZM Electronic Studio and you'll get most of the readings on there and these ones tend to be the most reliable but the reason that I'm doing this video is because I wanted to talk to you about the issue with this tester when you are reading components and MOSFETs especially that are going to be going into these crazy powerful car amplifiers. Now MOSFET technology has come a long way in recent years. We are starting to see insane um, MOSFETs, hugely high power, low RDS um, MOSFETs and their specifications are slightly out of the range that this thing was kind of originally designed to read. So the way that this works, this is using a 9 volt battery for its power supply. So you've got 9 volts going in and you can see when you first turn it on to read a component, the voltage which it uses for its uh, chips and for the PIC, the firmware, etc. is 5 volts. So it's creating a 5 volt VCC from your 9 volt battery. So your 9 volt battery will continue to work, you know, technically all the way down to sort of 6.5, 5 volts, whatever. Um, so yeah, you get quite a decent life out of a 9 volt battery with these. Um, but that is where the issue lies, the 5 volt VCC. Now, when we're looking at these MOSFETs, you have to think, how is this tester going to be testing the MOSFET? Um, I don't pretend to know what the hell is going on in this piece of magic right here as to how it exactly reads stuff. But actually, maybe an interesting thing to do real quick would be to just plug it into my oscilloscope real quick and we can maybe get a look at what the hell 
is this transistor tester doing between pins one, two, and three in order to read a component? So if I just very quickly, this is, this is slightly unplanned, I uh, just thought this might be a cool idea. If I plug my oscilloscope into this, I'm gonna go between pins one and three real quick. I just wanna see exactly what it looks like on the scope screen when we hit test. What does it do to read a component? Um, I'm gonna go down to, I don't know what, two volts divide, that should be about right. And we see exactly what it is doing. Hit test. Do -do 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 -do. See, it's reading my um, it's reading my uh, oscilloscope as a capa no, it's reading it as a resistor. Sorry, ten point one mega ohms. Reading it as a resistor. Sorry, and um, yeah, on the screen constantly while it's doing that, we have this constant fluctuating reading. That that that's how it's reading the the resistance, I guess. But yeah, it does all kinds of crazy magic, um, and I'm not gonna pretend that I know exactly what the bloody hell it's doing, but. The reason that the 5 volts VCC is a problem is because it's only able to use a maximum of 5 volts to test any component. Now, for the most part, resistors, capacitors, inductors, literally anything else that this is going to test, that's absolutely fine. More than enough to, you know, test a component properly. But when it comes to these new MOSFETs, sometimes it's not quite enough. Let's go ahead and test a regular MOSFET, okay, down here. So what I have here is I have an IRF3707, okay? This is the kind of MOSFET you see in a sort of 1500 watt RMS amplifier, perhaps. Um, so normal TO220 package MOSFET. So we're going to shove it in pins 1, 2, and 3 and hit test and see what it does. So obviously it's going through its crazy magic, whatever it's doing to test this component. And it's telling us that this MOSFET has a voltage threat a gate threshold voltage of 2.3 volts so when the vo the voltage on the gate is above 2.3 volts it turns the mosfet on it's telling us the gate capacitance the amount of capacitance that this mosfet um you know, displays on its gate, and it's telling us an RDS reading. Now, the first thing you'll notice is that this RDS reading is uh, not accurate. We have 0 0.2 ohms worth of RDS, which is absolute nonsense. If we take a look at our um, data sheet here, you can see the RDS um, for these MOSFETs should be around 0 0.0125 ohms. Now, that's to be expected, to be honest. This is a, a sort of cheap tester. Um, we have test lead resistance. I'm not expecting this thing to be an accurate sub-ohm tester. That's not the, pu the purpose of this tester. That's not what I'm using it for. So when you read RDS, look at the RDS, take note of it, but don't take it for real. Don't think, don't actually look at it and think, right, this is this is actually the, R the on drain, drain resistance, drain source resistance of this MOSFET, because that's not the case. What you can use the RDS reading for, however, is for comparison. If you've got a whole bunch of MOSFETs from an amplifier that you've just removed, um, and you know, you're testing them to see whether you could maybe put them to one side, use them for another project or something, see if they survive, see if they've got any damage or whatever. Um, you can read all of the MOSFETs from the amplifier that you've removed and um, you can get a base reading. So like, let's say that 12 of them um, have an RDS reading of uh, 0.6 ohms. Obviously it's not gonna be 0.6 ohms, but that's what this is reading at. Then you have one single MOSFET that's got an RDS reading of 12 ohms. Well. If you think about it, that's probably not going to be a good MOSFET because it's going to have some potential internal damage. That means that this reads it at 12 ohms RDS. So you can use the RDS um, reading for information, but don't take it as the real RDS reading. Now, the reason that the VCC is a problem because when you think about uh, these MOSFETs now, let's take a look at this uh, one, one of these other MOSFETs right here. So this MOSFET is the IRFB33N15D. This is the one I've got in front of me here, TO220 package. Now, if we take a look at the gate threshold voltage, okay? So these MOSFETs are going to turn on with, depending on the batch and depending on the manufacturing date and tolerances, etc., when they were made, anywhere between three volts on the gate to 5.5 volts on the gate reference to source. Now think about that for a minute. If this tester is only capable of providing 5 volts to whatever component it's testing, then if this MOSFET has a voltage, a turn on threshold on the gate of above 5 volts, it's not going to turn the MOSFET on, is it? Let's see that real quick. Here we go. Here are some B3515s. Shove that in there. These MOSFETs work perfectly, taken from a working amplifier, but on the tester, it reads it as a diode between drain and source because it doesn't have enough voltage to turn the gate on so you know when i was inexperienced for a while before i sort of realized this any mosfets that were like this i was like 
Oh damn, well that's broken, that doesn't work. Yeah, that's that's reading as a diode, that's not reading as a MOSFET, that sucks. So I, I chucked away probably countless of, of MOSFETs that were absolutely fine, even brand new ones. Um, and the thing that actually led me to start questioning this was when I did, I ordered a, a whole set of brand new um, of these MOSFETs. Um, and I didn't even test them first, I fitted them into the amplifier. I go, great, amplifier worked great, blah blah blah, went back to the customer, absolutely fine. Um, and then with some of the ones I had left from the same batch, I then just decided to test them just to see what they were reading. And I noticed that they were just reading as a diode. And I was like, what? How? How is this possible? How is the amplifier working when these aren't even showing up as a MOSFET? Um, and then I started looking, looking into it and I realized that, oh, hang on a minute, this doesn't have enough voltage to turn on these MOSFETs. Okay, so that's the first issue. Uh, about these things. If you've got a MOSFET that has a volt, a gate threshold um, of above 5 volts, then it's not going to read it correctly as a MOSFET. And unfortunately, you, knew you can't get any of the readings from it because it doesn't, doesn't turn it on. There are potentially some modifications you could make to this tester, something I could potentially look into in the future, to increase the VCC voltage of this. I'll have to check out what components it's using, um, all the kind of capacitors and diodes and chips and stuff in here, see what their limits are. If I can increase the VCC voltage, even up to six volts, like there's there's not gonna be any MOSFETs have a voltage, a gate threshold of six volts or greater, then I could modify this so that I can read these MOSFETs and uh, have them actually come up correctly. Now, Let's take a look at this. This, this, this. this is related to the same problem, but it's a slightly different issue, okay? Here on the table, I have a whole bunch of IRFP4227 MOSFETs. These are labeled up as D1 because the stupid factory remarks them because it thinks that people can't figure out what they are. So these MOSFETs I've got in groups and these groups are based on their gate threshold voltage. So down here, I have gate threshold voltage of 4.3. This bank is 4.4, this bank is 4.5, this bank is 4.6, 4.7, and 4.8 right at the top here. So you can see that the general consensus is that these MOSFETs will generally have a, a gate threshold a voltage of between 4.4 um, and 4.6, 4.7. Um, anything outside of that I'm skeptical to use because it's a kind of extreme and there's not many that have that. So I don't really want to be running ones that have a gate threshold voltage of 4.3 with ones that have a gate threshold of 4.8. That's why this tester is flipping useful because you can check for that and not put these in parallel with each other because they would start to heat up. So that's a great thing you can use this for. But let's just check some comparison readings between these. We're gonna go between the two extremes, okay? These MOSFETs are all taken from a brand new amplifier, okay? These MOSFETs are all fully functional MOSFETs, um, taken from a brand new amplifier. So there's no internal damage from these whatsoever. Let's take a look, first of all, at the ones which are reading a threshold voltage of 4.3, or they were earlier. See if they still are, yeah, 4.3. So here we go, 4.3, gate capacitance of 5.1 and an RDS as 0.4. This tester is reading the RDS at 0.4. Okay, great. What happens now if I read one of the 4.8 volt threshold FETs? There we go, 4.8. RDS, 11 ohms? What? Nani? Eh? Hold the phone? That's not right, is it? Now, I do not believe for an instance that that MOSFET actually has a drain source resistance of 11 ohms. There is no chance. The reason that I think this is happening, and we can confirm this by going down, let's now read some ones that I read at 4.7 earlier. Okay, so the one we read a minute ago was a 5 ohms with a 4.7. This one's 4 ohms with a 4.7. If we come down a little further to a 4.6, we should see the RDS come down a little bit. So what I'm noticing is as the gate threshold voltage gets closer, yeah, here we go, 1.5. As the gate threshold voltage gets closer to that 5 volt VCC that this transistor tester has inside, it doesn't turn the MOSFET on fully. It, it doesn't turn it on quite enough for the MOSFET to exhibit its true RDS value. There we go, look, we're getting lower and lower. Every time I go down on the VT, it gets lower. 1.0 um, on that one now. So that's now we've got a, a um, we should have a 4.4 volt threshold one here. And this should now, oh, there it is. Look, 4.3, 0.5. So the lower the gate threshold voltage when you test these, the lower the RDS that it is reading. There we go. 
So that is something which can throw you and that is a you know a problem with how these work and how these read RDS as you start getting towards that 5 volt VCC limit that these have it starts being unable to well it doesn't even read RDS correctly in the first place but it starts throwing up crazy values for the RDS because it's simply not turning the MOSFET on enough if we take a look at some data sheets here I've still got the data sheet up for um, this uh, this 33N15, but if we take a look at the graph, for example, we can take a look at the um, I want drain source resistance versus gate voltage. I should have a graph for that somewhere. Um, where, where are we? Where are we? Come on, give me a graph for that. I can't seem to have one that has a graph that I need, but I know for a fact, and you can actually go by the other graphs as well, that the higher the gate voltage, the voltage on the gate, the lower the RDS is going to be. If you had a graph that plotted great vol gate voltage versus RDS, as you increase the gate voltage, the RDS will come down. Um, and that is seen by, actually one of these graphs is gate voltage versus amount of current that the uh, transistor, that the MOSFET can pass. So yeah, with a higher gate voltage, the, the more above the threshold you are the lower the resistance that MOSFET will have between drain and source so the fact that this is only just able to turn these MOSFETs on with 4.8 volts of uh, turn on threshold with uh, and it's only giving it 5 volts obviously the uh, drain source resistance is going to be freaking crazy high and it's not going to be reading accurate at all so something to bear in mind with this now if I do make a modification to this and increase the VCC voltage then we'll start to see more sensible readings on the RDS when you're reading these MOSFETs that have quite close to 5 volts uh, turn on threshold voltage but um, yeah you can see it here again if I take a uh, 3707 now this these MOSFETs have a really really low um, gate threshold voltage look the, the threshold voltage is 2.4 and we have an RDS of 0.2 so super super low compared to you know, if we go back to one of these bad boys you know the, the RDS between these MOSFETs isn't going to be crazy high crazy difference between the two MOSFETs look 4.6 volts we have a 2.3 ohms that's definitely not correct so just something to bear in mind with these testers they are fantastic tools and they can save your ass and they can help you to rebuild an amplifier more reliably than you would be able to without it you can find inductor shorts you can find transformer shorts you can find leaking capacitors um, you can find all kinds of problems and damage components with these and they are a fantastic tool to have especially for the little money that you can get them for but it is worth noting their limitations and noting when to trust their readings and when to take them with a pinch of salt and uh, you know just kind of th kind of go by what you what you go by your your instincts you know if, if it's reading 11 ohms rds um just think about that for a minute think about that